Computers and other digital devices are becoming ubiquitous in our modern society. It was inevitable that they would begin to feature as heavily in crime and law. Since the late 1970s the amount of crime involving computers has been growing very quickly, creating a need for constantly developing forensic tools and practices. From its inception in the 1980s the digital forensics field has grown in popularity and support. Digital evidence is being recognized much more easily in courts and companies are understanding the need for proper forensic processes when investigating employee malpractice. Initially the field grew out of the work and needs of practitioners rather than from academics and scientists. This led to early digital investigations, tools and practices being ad hoc and uncertain. Since the early 21st century proper practices and guidelines have helped to formalize the field. Digital forensics is, at root, a forensic science encompassing the recovery and investigation of material found in digital devices. Forensic analysis of computers is a discipline growing in popularity amongst both the forensic science and computer security fields. Several university courses now teach the basics and professional qualifications are on offer from the forensic software developers. Although the cost of entry into the field can sometimes be prohibitive the market for forensic analysts is still strong and as time goes by the free software available to hobbyists is becoming more advanced. Becoming an analyst probably, still, does not require a formal degree in the field. Most of the skills can be learned through training and simple experience. Being an analyst requires two main skill sets. Attention to detail often investigations culminate in legal proceedings, either of the civil or criminal nature. To satisfy the, reasonably strict, rules of courts around the world digital evidence needs to be audited and carefully tracked. As detailed later in the book, digital media is easily altered and courts are still resisting evidence without a full audit log. Inquisitiveness unlike other areas of forensic science, digital investigations tend to be much more free-form. They often require investigators to have a deep grounding in both the technical aspects of computers and the psychology of the computer criminal. This course aims to detail the practical, theoretical and legal aspect of a digital forensic investigations. The main focus of the material will be on computer devices, touching on differences with mobile device forensics, a relatively new subfield. In addition the course will discuss legal aspects of working in digital forensics, and give advice for managers in charge of an investigation in their workplace. Finally we will look at the concept of anti-forensics and countermeasures. Digital forensics is traditionally associated with criminal investigations. As you would expect, most types of investigation center on some form of computer crime. This sort of crime can take two forms, computer-based crime and computer-facilitated crime. Computer-based crime, this is criminal activity that is conducted purely on computers, for example cyberbullying or spam. As well as crimes newly defined by the computing age it also includes traditional crime conducted purely on computers, for example, child pornography. Computer facilitated crime, crime conducted in the real world, but facilitated by the use of computers. A classic example of this sort of crime is fraud. Computers are commonly used to communicate with other fraudsters, to record, plan activities or to create fraudulent documents. Not all digital forensics investigations focus on criminal behavior. Sometimes the techniques are used in corporate or private settings to recover lost information or to rebuild the activities of employees. Types of investigation. There are four main types of investigation performed by digital forensics specialists. The first three are broadly similar in the activities they involve, but differ in terms of the legal restrictions and guidelines imposed as well as the type of digital evidence and form of report. Criminal forensics, the largest form of digital forensics and falling under the remit of law enforcement, or private contractors working for them. Criminal forensics is usually part of a wider investigation conducted by law enforcement and other specialists with reports being intended to facilitate that investigation and, ultimately, to be entered as expert evidence before the court. Focus is on forensically sound data extraction and producing report, evidence in simple terms that a layman will understand. Intelligence gathering, this type of investigation is often associated with crime, but in relation to providing intelligence to help track, stop or identify criminal activity. 
Unless the evidence is later to be used in court forensic soundness is less of a concern in this form of investigation, instead speed can be a common requirement. Electronic discovery, e-discovery, similar to criminal forensics but in relation to civil law. Although functionally identical to its criminal counterpart, e-discovery has specific legal limitations and restrictions, usually in relation to the scope of any investigation. Privacy laws, for example, the right of employees not to have personal conversation intercepted, and human rights legislation often affect electronic discovery. Intrusion investigation, the final form of investigation is different from the previous three. Intrusion investigation is instigated as a response to a network intrusion, for example a hacker trying to steal corporate secrets. The investigation focuses on identifying the entry point for such attacks, the scope of access and mitigating the hacker's activities. Intrusion investigation often occurs live, i.e. in real time, and leans heavily on the discipline of network forensics. Evidence and analysis. Obviously the main aim of any investigation is to recover some form of digital evidence, objective data that is relevant to the examination. On top of that the investigator might be asked to make some form of analysis of that evidence, either to form an expert conclusion, or to explain the meaning of the evidence. Here are some examples of the kind of analysis an examiner might be asked to undertake. Attribution, metadata and other logs can be used to attribute actions to an individual. For example, personal documents on a computer drive might identify its owner. Alibis and statements, information provided by those involved can be cross-checked with digital evidence. For example, during the investigation into the Soham murders, the offender's alibi was disproven when mobile phone records of the person he claimed to be with showed she was out of town at the time. Intents, as well as finding objective evidence of a crime being committed, investigations can also be used to prove the intent, known by the legal term mens rea. For example, the internet history of convicted killer Neil Entwistle included references to a site discussing how to kill people. Evaluation of source file artifacts and metadata can be used to identify the origin of a particular piece of data. For example, older versions of Microsoft Word embedded a global unique identifier I. A digital forensic investigation usually consists of three main stages. The first proactive step in any digital forensic investigation is that of acquisition. The inherent problem with digital media is that it is readily modified, even just by accessing files. For this reason analysts obtain a bit copy of the media using specialist tools which stop modification occurring. Working from a copy is one of the fundamental steps to making a forensic investigation audit able and acceptable to a court. Another fundamental part of the process is the ability to verify the accuracy of the evidence produced. Acquisition and verification are key concepts in preparing digital media for investigation. Prior to the availability of very large storage capacity the acquisition process usually consisted of creating a bit perfect copy of the digital media evidence. This is usually conducted with the media connected to a write blocking device which stops it from being modified during the process. After being acquired the physical media is placed in secure storage the forensic analyst conducts the forensic investigation on the copy. The aim of working on a copy of the evidence is to leave the original media intact, which allows for any evidence to be verified, proven accurate, at a later date. Write blockers can take two forms hardware or software, you can see a picture of a hardware write blocker to the right. The hardware devices are more reliable, stopping all write commands from reaching the digital media. Software writer blockers are less reliable and tend to be proprietary. Acquired media is usually refereed to as an image, they are stored in a number of open and proprietary formats. The popular in-case software employs a proprietary, compressible, in-case evidence file format, EEFF. Other open formats such as RAW, i.e. a simple bit copy, are used by programs such as FTK Imager. 
During acquisition forensic tools create a verification hash of the media, this allows an analyst to later confirm that the image and its contents are accurate, see verification, below. For example, the in-case evidence file format stores a hash for every 64k of data along with an appended MD5 hash of the entire media. The second stage of digital forensics is analysis. Analysis of digital media requires an instinct for rooting out evidence and the use of your intuition to connect the dots. In the field of digital forensics analysis can take two forms. Evidence recovery, where the analyst identifies information relevant to the investigation and presents it in a neutral form. Expert analysis. Following on from evidence recovery, the analyst draws expert conclusions from the information perhaps constructing a timeline of events, or connects various pieces of evidence together. Expert analysis can vary wildly from simple factual conclusions to a more speculative assessment of what recovered evidence represents. In criminal cases the latter is generally avoided at the analyst level. By comparison, in civil, corporate investigation the latter is more common. This is due to the fact that managers often do not have the technical understanding to draw conclusions that law enforcement personnel might have. When conducting an investigation it is important to remember who will be receiving the evidence you collect and performing an analysis that meets their requirements and needs. Reporting is a key final phase to any investigation. A skilled investigator aims to balance the technical facts against their own analysis, whilst presenting it in layman terms. Writing a good report is often a skill hard won by forensic analysts because communicating complicated ideas in simple language is not always easy. How your report findings depends a lot of who will be reading it. For the most part it is easiest to assume the person reading any report has no technical knowledge at all, and pitch it to them. A common forensic report might include, summary of findings, description of the analysis undertaken, Explanation of terms such as unallocated space and peer to peer, an extended glossary. Before we get too stuck into the nuts and bolts of digital forensic investigation, Let's take a moment to talk about the sort of terminology you are going to see throughout this course. As with any subject, digital forensics has its own arcane terms, and often redefines existing words to other meanings. Acquisition, the process of creating a duplicate copy of digital media for the purposes of examining it. E-discovery, a common acronym for electronic discovery. Exhibit. Digital media seized for investigation is usually referred to as an exhibit. Hashing, within the field, hashing refers to the use of hash functions, e.g. CRC, SHA-1 or MD5, to verify that an image is identical to the source media. Image, a duplicate copy of some digital media created as part of the forensic process. Imaging, synonym of acquisition. Live analysis. Analysis of a piece of digital media from within itself, often used to acquire data from RAM where this would be lost upon shutting down the device. Unallocated space, clusters of a media partition not in use for storing any active files. They may contain pieces of files that were deleted from the file partition but not removed from the physical disk. Verification a term used to refer to the hashing of both source media and acquired image to verify the accuracy of the copy. Right blocker, the common name used for a forensic disk controller, hardware used to access digital media in a read-only fashion. Forensic tools, in the early days of digital forensics, analysts had to make do with existing system administration or information security tools. Plenty of these existed, but they were not particularly suited to the more formal approach of a forensic investigation. In particular, much of the software required you to run it on the live system, 
which introduced all manner of problems with modifying evidence. During the 1980s and 90s, however, increased funding and interest in the field encouraged the development of a variety of specialist commercial and freeware tools. These can generally be broken down into three categories. General forensic tools, tools allowing a wide variety of investigation, particularly keyword searching, on digital media. Specialist forensic tools, which focus on a specific piece of forensic material for investigation, perhaps images or internet artifacts. Often relying on output from one of the general tools. Case management tools, these are used to track, audit and report on cases. In addition, there is a fourth category of useful software, a normal piece of software which can usefully be adapted for use in a forensic investigation. General forensic tools, many of these tools are complex, commercially produced, and come with enterprise price tags in the region of thousands of dollars a year. The majority of commercial tools run on Windows whilst free tools tend to run on Linux. Later on we will discuss the ways digital media can be investigated in more depth, but for the moment it is important to understand that general forensic software is usually centered around the act of keyword searching across a piece of digital media. The two most common ways of performing such searches is live search where the digital media is parsed for a set of keywords and bookmarks of hit locations is stored, and indexing where a text index of the digital media is created allowing searches to be performed quickly using the index. Both styles have advantages and disadvantages. The de facto industry standard tool is usually considered to be in case, produced by guidance software. It is a general forensics tool tailored for Windows systems and focuses on the live search method. It includes a scripting interface, dubbed nScript, which is useful for developing custom tools to extract information. In case is closely followed by Access Data's Forensic Toolkit, or FTK. Other Windows-based tools include ILOOK, Parabens E3 and ISEEK, which uses a new hybrid forensics approach. Specialist Forensic Tools Specialist tools focus on a particular aspect of forensic investigation for example categorizing images or recovering internet artifacts. The range of tools and software is vast, including commercial and free offerings. One of the better known is a free tool called Categorizer for Pictures, which is a helper tool for classifying images and presenting your results. C4P is a class of tool that relies on output from InCase, using an end script to parse and extract images for processing. We discuss C4P in more detail in Image Investigations. Another common theme for specialist tools is Internet artifacts. This can range from recovering Internet cache data, web pages and other fragments, to analyzing Internet history or recovering chat transcript. Internet artifacts often contain a large amount of useful evidence and it is a common focus for investigations. Some notable tools include Net analysis, commercial tool, passes internet history files, dot dat, and allows searching, analysis of the data. Internet evidence finder, commercial, scans digital media for a variety of internet artifacts, for example, chat, webmail and internet history. Virtual forensic computing, allows digital media containing an operating system to be mounted as a virtual machine. Case management tools. We already touched on case management in documenting evidence, but it is included here for completeness. Very few, if any, software tools exist for complete case management, although some practitioners adapt case management tools from the law field. Several free case note tools exist for creating auditable notes, the primary example being case notes. Many analysts still use paper documents partly because this is an audit trail that courts understand and accept. Useful software. A wide variety of tools exist that are adaptable for forensic investigation. System administration tools, for example, can often tell you a lot about a system. 
VMware is a commercial, free tool that can be used to view digital media as virtual machines. VLC Media Player can be useful for handling a diverse collection of media. Analysis of digital media requires an instinct for rooting out evidence and the use of your intuition to connect the dots. In the field of digital forensics analysis can take two forms. Evidence recovery, where the analyst identifies information relevant to the investigation and presents it in a neutral form. Expert analysis, following on from evidence recovery, the analyst draws expert conclusions from the information perhaps constructing a timeline of events, or connects various pieces of evidence together. Expert analysis can vary wildly from simple factual conclusions to a more speculative assessment of what recovered evidence represents. When conducting an investigation it is important to remember who will be receiving the evidence you collect and performing an analysis that meets their requirements and needs. The aim of any digital investigation is usually to prove or disprove a hypothesis. Alternatively you might be asked to go on a phishing exercise to find useful intelligence, perhaps to identify associates of a known criminal. Before you begin work it is a good idea to write down and confirm these aims and define the scope of any analysis. Defining a scope is important for a number of reasons. Cost. Digital forensics can often be a costly process, in terms of resources and staff costs, and spending time on unrelated searches can be a waste of money. Time. Closely related to cost, in addition many investigations have a time limit on them imposed by management or, in the case of criminal work, the law courts. Succinct evidence. Without focus and analysis may result in a large amount of tangentially relevant information, leaving conclusions hard to draw. One way to ensure a focused analysis is to carefully list the aims of the investigation. For example, what you wish to prove, then to list the sort of evidence that may contain relevant information. For example, in an investigation into computer hacking, an in-depth graphic image analysis is likely to be of less use than searches for chat logs. Whilst it is important to define a scope the nature of a forensic investigation means that it is not always stringently followed. For example it might be decided that chat logs are unlikely to be relevant, then subsequently other evidence indicates they may contain useful data. The benefit of defining a scope is that it gives examiners a place to start the investigation. Once an examiner knows the type of evidence required the next, rather obvious, step is to extract it from the acquired media. Recovering data. Restoring deleted data is one of the fundamental activities performed by a forensic analyst. To understand why deleted data is recoverable we need some background on how information is stored by a computer. Obviously the hard drive is the storage medium, data is reduced to a stream of ones and zeros, or bits. Eight bits make up one byte of data and, on a typical hard drive, a set of either 512 or 4096 bytes are stored as one sector. A sector makes up the fundamental unit of data storage on a hard drive, but file systems consider groups of sectors, termed a cluster.